well-maintained, well-tuned automobile is essential for our mobile society. It is a fact that poorly maintained automobiles produce more pollution and are costly to operate. Just like automobiles, trickling filters and rotating biological contactors must be well maintained and tuned to save money and reduce pollution. Trickling filters and rotating biological contactors are carefully controlled biological processes that utilize aerobic microorganisms to consume colloidal and dissolved organic matter from the wastewater. Removal of the colloidal and dissolved solids is necessary to reduce the BOD in the wastewater. In some cases, trickling filters and rotating biological contactors are designed to remove ammonia from the wastewater. In treatment facilities that are designed for ammonia removal, trickling filters or RBCs may be operated in series with another biological treatment unit. Taking a closer look at the trickling filter, we find that it is comprised of four major components. The retaining structure, the media, the distribution system, the underdrain system. First, let's take a look at the retaining structure. The structure houses all of the other major components of the trickling filter. The structure may be either round or square and could be anywhere from 4 feet to 50 feet tall depending upon the design of the filter. Materials commonly used for the construction of trickling filter structures include concrete and a special ceramic coated steel. The taller filters usually have ladders for easy access. The structure should be inspected regularly and repaired if necessary. Care should be taken to prevent excessive weed growth around the trickling filter structure as this provides an excellent place for filter flies to congregate. Next, we will look at the media in the trickling filter. The media provides surface area for microorganisms to grow and feed on the organic matter in the wastewater. In all trickling filters, the media is either a stacked type or random dump type of media such as rock. Random dump media should be uniform in size to facilitate airflow through the media. As the name suggests, this media is dumped into the filter up to the desired depth. Random dump media may also be made of plastic or other materials. Stacked media is generally a plastic media that comes in sections that resemble hay bales. This media is carefully stacked in several layers within the trickling filter. In most plastic media, the top layer has some sort of ultraviolet protection to avoid deterioration due to sunlight. All media should be examined for signs of deterioration. Deteriorating media can lead to poor operation and septic conditions within the filter. The media should also be kept free of debris. Looking at the distribution system, we see that it may be either a rotating or a fixed orifice type of system. In either case, the job of the distribution system is to evenly distribute the water over the filter media. Rotating distributors are usually powered by the jet action of the wastewater discharging from the orifices. A rotating distributor may have either two or four arms. The orifices are usually adjustable and are equipped with splash plates to evenly fan the wastewater over the media. The orifices are closer together as you get to the outer part of the distributor to facilitate an even distribution of the wastewater over the entire bed of media. In some cases, there may be orifices on the reverse side of the arm to act as reverse thrusters to control distributor arm speed. Most distributor arms have end plates that can be lifted to flush out debris. It is important to keep the flow through the distributor arm unrestricted. Keeping the orifices clean is important for proper operation of the trickling filter in both fixed and rotating distribution systems. In the center column of the rotating distributor, you will find bearings and seals that must be maintained.
If the seal in the center column is leaking excessively, it should be replaced. Leaking seals can lead to poor trickling filter performance. Warning! Some older trickling filters may be equipped with mercury seals. Mercury is an extremely toxic element that requires special handling. If your trickling filter is equipped with a mercury seal, notify your local DEP office at once. Finally, let's take a look at the underdrain system. It is this system that supports the media, facilitates the collection of the wastewater under the filter media, and allows for airflow up through the media. The underdrain system should be kept free of debris to allow the wastewater to flow unrestricted out of the trickling filter. If wastewater backs up in the underdrain system, it could trap off airflow and lead to septic conditions within the filter. Now that we have identified the major components, let's take a look at three common classifications of trickling filters. Standard rate filters, high rate filters, and roughing filters. Standard rate filters have a hydraulic loading rate of 25 to 100 gallons per day per square foot of media surface and an organic loading of 5 to 25 pounds of BOD per day per 1,000 cubic feet of media. Most standard rate filters are dosed intermittently with the use of a dosing chamber and are not equipped for constant recirculation. Typically, standard rate filters utilize rock media at a depth of 6 to 8 feet. High rate trickling filters typically have hydraulic loadings of 100 to 1000 gallons per day per square foot of media surface and an organic loading of 25 to 300 pounds of BOD per day per 1000 cubic feet of media. Recirculation of wastewater is almost always used on high rate filters. Care should be taken when adjusting recirculation rates. Too high of a recirculation rate can lead to a turbid effluent that is high in suspended solids. Typical depth of rock media in a high rate filter is 3 to 5 feet, while synthetic media can be deeper than 40 feet. Some trickling filters that utilize synthetic media will have higher loading rates. These filters are sometimes referred to as super high rate filters. Roughing filters are essentially the same as high rate filters except for receiving higher loadings. This type of filter is used primarily to reduce the CBOD to subsequent biological treatment units. Now, let's take a look at rotating biological contactors. Rotating biological contactors are usually referred to as RBCs and perform essentially the same function as the trickling filter. The main difference between the RBC and the trickling filter is that the RBC rotates the media through the wastewater as opposed to the trickling filter that distributes the wastewater over the media. RBCs utilize high density plastic discs that are placed on shafts up to 25 feet long. These units are placed into a tank that usually submerges approximately 40% of the media in the wastewater. The media usually rotates at a speed of 1 or 2 RPMs. Most RBCs are covered to protect the biological growth and to protect the media from damaging ultraviolet rays. RBCs are typically divided into four stages to maximize their effectiveness. Usually this process does not involve recirculation of wastewater. The RBC unit may be driven mechanically by diffused air or a combination of both. In any event, the operator must perform preventative maintenance to keep these units operating properly. Now that we have examined both trickling filters and RBCs, we need to make sure that we operate these units at peak efficiency to maintain good affluent quality. This can be accomplished by proper maintenance and proper process control. It should be noted that the facility NPDES permit requires all process equipment to be maintained in good working order and requires the operators to be familiar with efficiencies and removals of all treatment units. 
At a well-operated treatment facility, the operator should be able to tell state or federal inspectors the efficiency, removals, and operational history of the treatment unit. In order to make proper process control decisions and calculate efficiencies, the facility operator must perform some process control testing on the influent and effluent of the trickling filter or RBC. At a minimum, the facility operator needs to perform the following process control tests. Dissolved oxygen, pH, BOD, total suspended solids, temperature, Seeky disk in the clarifier. In addition to process control tests, the operator should make frequent visual inspections of the unit and keep detailed logs on all items related to the process. Microscopic examination of the zooglial mass can also assist the operators in assessing performance and troubleshooting. Other information that the operator needs for proper process control calculations includes flow through the unit, recycle flows, and efficiencies of upstream treatment units. Weather conditions can play a big role in the operation of trickling filters and RBCs. It is important for the operator to keep records on weather conditions and the effect the weather has on the treatment unit. Now that the wastewater has flowed through the biological treatment stage of a trickling filter or RBC, it is now ready to flow into a secondary clarifier where the sloughings and remaining solids will be settled out. Now, let's take a moment and quickly review what we've learned. The four basic components to a trickling filter are the structure, the media, the distribution system, and the underdrain system. Three basic categories of trickling filters include standard rate, high rate, and roughing filters. RBCs perform a similar function to the trickling filter, except the media is rotated in the wastewater instead of wastewater being spread over the media. After the trickling filter, or RBC, process, the wastewater passes into a secondary clarifier where sloughings and remaining solids settle out. And now, under the watchful eye of the skilled treatment plant operator, the wastewater has passed through the biological trickling filter, RBC, and secondary clarifier. The wastewater can now flow onto the next stage in the treatment process.